Hello, my name's Oliver, and welcome to an absolutely stunning day in beautiful rural France. This behind me is one of my, well, least favourite jobs, if I'm honest. When it's done, it's one of my favourite results, but it is a bit of a grueler to get there. Now, what I mean by that is all of this grey is cement, and it's like the worst kind of cement. It's the brutalist scrambled egg. It's uh, a lot of cement and not much sand and it is incredibly hard and incredibly difficult to knock out and unfortunately a very common sight in buildings of this age. Someone in the 70s thought I'm going to save that building and uh, didn't do a very good job of it. Well it's still here so they, they preserved it for then but we can do better. Now if you'll notice this wall is made of this nice crumbly lime and this stuff is horrible grey cement. And what we need to do is we need to remove all the horrible grey cement and replace it with the new nice crumbly lime. Because the lime is incredibly strong, in fact a lot stronger than the cement. And as proof of that, in this area, not very far from me, there are Roman built buildings that are over a century, sorry, over a millennia old. This place is about 450 years old, so this has done quite well. But anything that's made of lime mortar and has been around for a thousand years is doing incredibly well. You know, at that point you can call it a proven technology, can't you? But what happens with the cement and the reason why these are so bad is this person obviously thought that wall needs pointing and I'm going to point it. But then what happens is the water gets in behind the cement and washes down through the stones when it rains and it washes out all of your lime mortar because lime can absorb water but cement can't and so that can prove really really problematic for a building because if it freezes not only does it give you damp but if it freezes it can actually crack your house which is uh, suboptimal at best so in this video Merriman and I are going to talk you through the job of knocking all of this off and repointing it with nice stuff because I know there's a lot of people out there I'm not on my own but I know there's a lot of people out there oh, never there's a lot of people out there that are in the same situation as us. So it's, it's not a very complex job. It's one of those jobs that you've just got to kind of take your time at. And you need a really good chisel, uh, a really good long arm chisel like this is vital. A short chisel will end up with you bleeding a lot and you'll you'll miss the end of the chisel and you'll knock your knuckles and trust me, I've been there. And at first I tried to get by with a, a century old mason's chisel that I just happened to have and uh, it wasn't good enough and I went out and I spent the money because these are not cheap and uh, the other thing that you're going to need is a really good lump hammer. A friend of mine a few days ago gave me a call and he has damp in his floor which is why he gave me a call and uh, he has a basement and all that and he has these big stone blocks in his kitchen and he was having to lift up the stone blocks or he thought he had to lift up the stone blocks but after hearing what I've uh, what I'm about to tell you in this video he doesn't have to but I said to him have you got a lump so I can uh, so I can have a look at your pointing and uh, he goes yeah yeah so he disappears off and comes back two minutes later with this lump hammer and it was like a child's lump hammer. <laughs> it's the worst lump hammer I've ever used in my entire life. You see, a lump hammer doesn't need a very long handle, which is why it has this thin bit here, because you hold it up here. You want really good control of it, because it's, you know, it's a big weight. And that's the other key. You want a nice, heavy, sturdy and quality head. There's a lot of cheap lump hammers out there, and they're rubbish. Because if it's made of rubbish metal, you'll see how the ends, like, softened. A lump hammer over time will lose bits of itself and a cheap lump hammer will lose bits of itself very quickly so will your chisel and that's why it gets shorter over time but uh, this thing was ridiculous and ended up swinging away like this which is not how you want to use a lump hammer it's really tough on your wrists a heavier lump hammer is better because you can do shorter swings and the hammer does the work so that you don't have to which is the whole point of tools isn't it <laughs> after all and yeah you just want to like go on an angle as much as you can and just tap 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 away and uh, and slowly but surely you'll get rid of it all and this stuff is horrible and you, you know you see it so much on buildings but lime mortar is absolutely fantastic stuff as crumbly and as uh, as weak as it seems it's actually far better than cement at holding buildings together and Merriam is now going to show you how 
we actually replace all of that iron mortar with lovely brand new pointing because it's lovely stuff and Miriam is far better at it than me. Hello everyone, my name is Miriam and I'm going to uh, show you and explain to you what mortar does. It spreads the load throughout our wall and prevents our wall from cracking. That means that when we point uh, the walls, it uh, stops the stones from uh, touching each other. The benefits of lime is uh, breathable, so we know that our walls are going to breathe. Yeah. Lime, it, it's uh, an antifungus, so we're never going to get mold or damp inside our wall because it's going to dry. Uh, it is environmentally friendly, eco-friendly, uh, works really nicely around wood. So if we have a window with a wooden beam and we point around it, uh, because lime is antifungal, we know that our wood is not going to get fungus and the lime is going to absorb all the moisture from the wood and our wood is going to long, uh, last longer. The tools I'm going to need are uh, safety glasses, definitely very important. We need to keep our eyes safe because if we get lime on our eyes, it can get us, uh, make us blind. Uh, we're going to need as well two buckets. One I'm going to use for the mix of lime and sand. And this one I'm going to put water. Then I'm going to use my trowels. I use three different sizes of trowels. This big one I use to pick up my sand and put it in the bucket and lime. And these two ones I use them for, uh, for my pointing. This thinny one I use to go through my um, between the stones and like compact the lime mortar inside in between the stones because we want it to be very packed and like tight in. And then this one if, is uh, for the space when it's a little bit uh, wider. So it helps to put more quantity of lime in here and then compact it in. And then I use this to put my obviously my lime mortar and then I can go in between the stones and fill them up. If the well, camera work uh, is a bit uh, rubbish, that's my fault. Because, yeah, it unfortunately, is. I haven't used a camera in ages. No. And, and it's making me laugh a lot. And you know, no. like, <laughs> I'm, I'm used to filming cars, not, yeah. not pretty ladies. Mm -hmm. So, if, if camera work is wobbly and, and shaky and not square yeah. and stuff, then, uh, and sorry for then my it's English, all Miriam's fault. If I don't for explain myself me. proper. <laughs> so. Go on. <laughs> no, your English is lovely. No, but sometimes everybody it can get comments, a, little bit, a little bit confusing. Everybody in the comments, tell Miriam how lovely her English is. Mm. Please. But I'll get in there. Local mixes, depending where you live, uh, it can be completely different. It can have uh, pebbles or tiny stone, ta small stones in the mix, or horse hair or choke. It can be all sorts. So if you have a listed house or a historic house or you want to like match your original wall with the new wall, I would definitely contact the uh, historic building uh, heritage organization and make sure that you use the correct components and if you just applied for planning permission you want to keep the people the planning permission people happy as well if in that area. If you for planning permission or before you, you do it it's yeah, a good idea. Because some people are using. Hang on. Explain right. this better than me, so always going to explain right, hang it. Hang on. Let's. let's <laughs> right. There we go. Something. Something yeah, like something that. Like right. That. So, basically, if you're going to apply for planning permission and you want to build a new building, it can be a really good idea if you're going to use lime, because lime is like super eco friendly and it's. There's some eco buildings like the, the sealed ones, I can't remember what they're called, passive houses. Some passive houses are using the horsehair and lime mortar recipe that I grew up with in my house, and my house is 400 years old. Mm. So, you know, it's a it's a half set, it's a half millennia old lime mortar recipe at least, and it's being used on modern high tech eco houses. But it's a really good idea. I mean, can't hear you. If, yeah, you can. I've, you've got your love, Michael. It's a really good idea if you are kind of thinking of applying for planning permission in a, in a historic area or in a green belt area, something which I have some experience with because I grew up in a green belt area. Um, and that's something that I, bear, uh, that I kind of paid attention to when we applied for planning permission for this place, which is why it got accepted in the first, like, straight away, was that I looked at the local area, I looked at the local methods of construction, and I kind of 
added those local methods of construction into the construction of our own home, including using local lime mortar mm -hmm. and local lime mortar mixes so that the house was in keeping with the surrounding area. And that can be a huge, huge thing because a lot of you... Uh, a lot of your local planning office or your local council or even your neighbours will be much more likely to be happy Happier, with your plans yeah. if mm. they think that it's not going to stick out and it's not going to be this eyesore yeah. because it's going to be kind of in keeping with the surroundings. And, and that can be, as, be the same. And, yeah, and that yeah. can be as subtle as using local lime mortar mixes yeah. because then at least your house will be a similar colour to those yeah. around mm. you. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You go that mm. explaining mm. things like this. Yes, I do it for a living, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for our mix, we're going to use our local sand. It's like sand from a river. It's very coarse and thick. I've just done some in here, and it, it looks so coarse. And uh, then for the lime is this one. We're going to use our local lime. It is this Tradi 100 NHL5. National the, Hockey League! <laughs> it's a natural colour. I love it. Complements <laughs> the stones. I love it for the outside of the building, for the pointing. It's just amazing. I love this colour for the outside. You can uh, get it in white as well, but not for the outside. I love it more natural. And uh, for the mixing, I'm going to be uh, using three Trowels of uh, sand, one of lime. So three, two, one. Three trowels. If you're using trowels, it's just I'm gonna Doesn't give you an example. If you're using a shovel, it's three shovels. Yeah, it's an one. example. If you use trowels, three trowels of sand, one of lime, and then water. You mix it, uh, mix it first, and then you add water. And uh, the consistency you want it to be a little bit not liquid or not too like dry. You want it to be this middle mix. One trick of mine as well when you open a bag is to make like a, an eye, big eye. Go like that and then go like that. It just helps. Very important, safety glasses and gloves. We need to protect our eyes and then protect our skin. So you should always have something with long sleeves and then gloves because it will dry your skins like mud. Here we go. Gloves. Because if you think hand sanitizer is bad, yeah. bad line. Look how coarse the sand is. It should be like this, almost. But liming is very dirty, so use your non-usable closed she says closed. <laughs> a little bit decent on camera as well Very, no a little bit <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah well anyway it's just just because i like it so anyway here we have our lime mixed and then we have the brush my trowels put them in here somewhere where i can see here and then my <sighs> Working too. First of all, I'm going to uh, wet the wall. Oh, shit. <laughs> just go wet. Because we want the space in between the stones to be wet so the lime can stick properly. Yeah, well, we'll start with this square. Here we go. And then I'm gonna get my magic tool. Put some lime here. And then normally what I do is I use these two trowels, put them next to me here, so I can move from one trowel to another easier. So for example, here I have this uh, uh, quite deep and like wider crack in here. So I use this bigger one so I can put more quantity in. And then I go to this small one and like squish it in as much as possible. There we go. I'm going to come up. It's a little bit dirty, but never mind. It looks amazing afterwards. We can like go when it's dry, go behind it and like brush it and make it nicer. 
Here we go. I'm gonna go like this. If you're doing pointing or liming, keep in mind that when you do it, the temperature should be at least five degrees and above. And uh, you need to know as well that it's not gonna freeze at night because we don't want our all the job we do on the pointing to fall off. And obviously it takes a couple of hours for the lime, couple of hours, no, couple of days for the pointing or lime to dry and to harden takes over a year. Oh, Miriam, what do you think of houses that have ivy growing on them? Terrible, because it digs out your lime and that your wall stays uh, damp. No good. So no, not for me. <laughs> Maybe that it looks pretty, but technically it's not good for your building. Because we want our building to be intact and uh, strong no and dry definitely i love pointing i think it's very relaxing i've been uh, last summer i've been doing it for like hours and hours it's very very relaxing and uh, joyful because you can see a wall without lime and then you see the bit that is lime and it's like nice and pretty <laughs> I still have the front of the house to do yet, half up of the barn to do. And I think I'm going to do it this uh, summer, more spring. I can start already in a minute because the temperature is getting better. You can do points in different ways. I like it doing it like this because I like the curve of the pointing and it just flows with the building. But the other way is you can like uh, flatten in between the stones you can flatten the thing but you need a, an even wall and I don't really really like it so that's why I'm doing it like this because I like it like it's curvy <laughs> well, what you have to do is you have to make sure that your your lime mortar like Merriam has here if Merriam just moves a second you have to make sure that your lime mortar is protecting that your, your building yeah. and that you don't end up with water flowing into your wall. Yeah. Because the last thing that you want to do is make a ramp for water to flow down your wall and into your wall. Yep. That's so if, right. you, if you have really uneven walls, then you have to do it in that manner where you're not going to get damp in your wall. some pointing done and because it's still fresh so I'm gonna go around the stones and like brush the stones a bit just take any white lime washed on them and leave the pointing dry a bit longer and then I can water this brush take any extra off and then brush the lime uh, the pointing afterwards I hope you found this video entertaining, educational and possibly slightly funny. Yeah, so don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon so every time my video goes up you're going to be notified. And if you have any comments about pointing, liming or anything we've done, leave a comment below because any we are very interested like to hear that. from you. And also if you have any pictures of your own liming or, or housework or anything like that, tag us on social media. Yeah. It's always nice to hear from you. We're on yeah. all of the social medias and they are listed in, in the description below. below. <laughs> So, thank, thank you, you for so watching. much for watching. Please Take care. Oh, yeah, we have different outro. Don't worry. Don't worry. All right. Okay. Bye. bye.